So welcome to one of my first YouTube videos here and today I'm going to be talking about OBS webcams. Now during this current time we live in webcams are crazy expensive like you're talking like £200 for a Logitech C920 which isn't even that good of a webcam to be perfectly honest with you. So I looked at other solutions, I thought about maybe using my lovely camera here, but that meant I had to buy a capture card, I don't own a capture card, capture cards are quite expensive, and also I'd have to buy a bunch of accessories to make my camera work for that, and it's just not worth it really if you ask me. I'm sure it looks amazing, but it's a lot of expense for what is essentially a small hobby on the side. You could also use your phone, but you've got to remember that your phone was designed for like quick little texting sessions and stuff and prolonged usage like one hour or more of streaming your the camera over the network or something, that's going to kill your battery. Like it will destroy your phone. It's probably fine to do it a few or four times, but prolonged use all throughout the years, maybe a few times a week, that's not going to help your battery age at all. That's going to negatively impact your device long term. So unless you're buying a new phone every year, I don't think that's a good solution. So I was thinking about this and I was like, well, maybe I'll just have to do it without a webcam or maybe I could find some way to share my laptop's crappy webcam with my desktop. And here's what I decided. I was looking at some videos on YouTube um, I think it was from Epos Vox or something, and he was talking about this really expensive broadcast quality camera for streaming and stuff, and I noticed something. It was an IP camera. What's an IP camera, you might ask? An IP camera connects into a computer network. So you might, it just plugs into your router essentially. You can use some of them on, over Wi-Fi, or most of them you just plug in with an ethernet cable obviously because you want the lowest latency, highest reliability for most IP camera stuff. So that's quite a cool solution. It means I could have quite a high amount of cameras over the network and I'm not limited by USB. I'm not limited by capture cards. It's quite a flexible sounding solution. I was like, wait a minute. I've got a camera system which I self installed and they use IP cameras. Here's one of them. It's a hike vision camera, to be exact. And look at that. It's got a little Ethernet connector on the bottom. So this is a great little camera for streaming, I think you'll find. And most of these, you can also use what's called power of Ethernet. So you can have one cable, which powers the camera and gets the video out of it. That sounds pretty damn cool. I don't have to mess with battery adapters for this camera here. I don't have to mess with like HDMI cables, which are big and bulky. I can use a, an Ethernet cable, which is quite flexible. It's easy to make your own GAT5 Ethernet cables if you wanted. It sounded really cool. And I was like, I'm going to try it. So IP cameras come in various shapes and sizes. That was obviously what's called a turret camera. That's a bit big and bulky for a streaming setup. So. I didn't use that camera, also um, this one's been mullered, the power connector's been cut off so I can't use this camera in my setup because I don't have power over ethernet at my setup here. I have to use the power connector. So here's the sort of camera I'm, I was thinking of using, It's a this is a Uniview one. It's a, it's a decent camera, I think these are like £30 brand new or something ridiculously cheap. And as you can see on the end, you've got your ethernet connector that can go into your router and then a little power connector, which you can plug like a 12 volt power connector like you would use on LED strips or something. So that's a nice little small camera. That's what I ended up using. I didn't use this exact one though. I used a hike vision one. In fact, it's already mounted, so I can't show you. I might overlay a picture here, but I, I have the lower dome for it. <laughs> because I'm using it without this just because I think I get a little bit of a clearer image because of the way I've mounted it it doesn't look so great through the lower dome part but there you go that camera's mounted I've plugged it into my router so my computer here can discover it and we're up and running we have an image now these high vision cameras use a piece of software called SADP tool I think it's called it's a weird name anyway with that tool I can see the IP camera I can go to the IP camera and I can see 
I can see myself through Internet Explorer. So that's not very good, but let's put it into OBS. So I thought, well, I'll try the media source. Y yeah, the media source was terrible. It had like two seconds of delay, which was j really inconvenient. So I thought, well, I'll try the VLC media source, which was a bit better. 500 milliseconds of delay, I think it was. But it was also using pretty much my entire CPU, which was not very acceptable when you're trying to stream or record at the same time and you're playing a game all of that while VLC is just magically using 20% of your CPU I then thought well I'll try good old Internet Explorer and I'll just use the window capture which is what I actually ended up using for a while it worked quite well but I mean it did use a quite a bit of CPU still but the other day I found a brilliant solution and that is GStreamer there is a plugin for OBS that you can download and you have to install the runtime as well and add it to your system path variable. It's quite a complicated setup, but once it's set up and you can see it inside OBS, you just add your IP cameras using one of the following strings. You got one for H.264 and you got one for H.265. I'll leave them in the description and you just change the IP address and username and password to your camera's details and boom. I could see myself in OBS. I was using barely any CPU, barely any GPU, and it was amazing. Also, I had about 300 milliseconds of latency, which was even better than Internet Explorer with the official software from the camera. Like, it was amazing. 300 milliseconds is easy to compensate for. I've just delayed my audio by 300 milliseconds, and I've delayed my gameplay recording and stuff by 300 milliseconds, and that works absolutely fine. It doesn't matter that that's all delayed by 300 milliseconds because that's not a great deal of time. And the only reason I've delayed it is so that everything s looks like it's happening in real time. But in reality, because of the delay between the camera and the computer, I've delayed everything else and it just, it just makes it all work. So yeah, this is a great setup. It means I could have not only the one webcam here, I could have multiple cameras. I could have these cameras like miles apart using wireless adapters and stuff to connect them up. It is a really flexible system and I think it probably trumps most webcams in quality. It will definitely not trump this camera in terms of quality. I mean this isn't even a great camera. This is quite an old Panasonic camera. It's only 1080p. But it doesn't matter because for a webcam in a game that IP camera over there looks very good so yeah that's pretty much how I'm doing my camera setup it's incredibly simple but also incredibly complicated which sounds like the most me thing ever invented really